Alright everyone, this is the next video in the intermediate series and if you not if you have not seen my previous one where I worked with the group policy editor in Windows 7, then I highly recommend you go back right now and watch that video because this video will make a lot more sense if you do. So here we are on our server and last video since we talked about the group policy editor in Windows 7, I want to touch back on the group policy editor in Windows Server 2008 R2. Now a couple of videos ago we worked with our group policy management and we set up a drive map that way but what I want to do right now is I want to go to our local gpedit.msc so once again our gpedit.msc applies locally to our own computer whereas our group policy management applies to all the computers in our domain so now I want to go here to our Windows settings we're gonna look at our security settings and account policies so here as always we have our password policy and if I want to hit enforce password history it's grayed out and I can't do that and it's the same for all of these options and you might be wondering why how come I can't change these options and it's the same for the account lockout policy over here if I click on the middle one I can't set anything and of course as I previously discussed if you want to set uh, these other two options you have to set the account lo lockout threshold first so let's come down to our local policies and let's look at our audit policy so our audit policy is allowing for us to uh, uh, make changes here. And let's look at our user rights assignment. So access credential manager is a trusted caller. We can add user or group, so it looks like we can make changes here. But access this computer from the network, well, we can't make any changes here either. So how come some of them were allowed to make changes and the other ones we can't? Well, there's a simple answer to this, and that's this little icon right here this little piece of paper that has ones and zeros on it if the icon is the ones and zeros then you're allowed to make changes to it but if it looks like this little server right here with a little letter which sort of looks like the icon for our group policy management then that means it's getting this option from the server it's getting this option from your group policy management so because we're actually on the server whatever information we set in our group policy editor say for instance for our password history is going to apply to the server and this is the same for the account lockout policy but for something like our audit policy we can set directly here so let's take a look at our group policy management once again you can go to administrative tools and hit your group policy management but I have it pinned right here so I'm going to open that and this is the drive map we made previously and here's our default domain policy so let's take a look at our default domain policy. If we click on the settings tab over here, close that, then we can see some of the different settings that are applied. So right now, here's our password history that we were talking about. We couldn't change it, but everything's set up fine here. And our delegation is going to our domain admins, our enterprise admins, and authenticated users. So what we're actually going to do right now is create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So let's call this one just basic security options. Now we're going to hit on our basic security options and we are going to right click edit and that brings up some of our settings here that we're familiar with. I'm going to take a look at the user configurations. I'm going to take a look at Windows settings and actually let's go down to preferences my apologies let's look at control panel settings as we give things a second to load here now let's look at the start menu so let's say new windows start menu windows vista and later once again that was a right click to add the new windows start menu and I'm going to say that we're gonna display the computer as a menu we're gonna display our control panel as a menu and our default programs we're gonna leave as a link games I'm gonna say do not display music do not display personal folders uh, we'll leave that as default printers run search alright so things are looking pretty good there here we can say display run or display log off pardon me 
and under common we'll leave that normal so we'll hit OK there apply those settings and let's just close out this group policy management editor and we're going to come over to the settings here on our basic security options okay so here's all the changes we just made so this basic security options when it's applied to a user or to a computer or to a group these are the options that it's going to give them so I'm going to say delegation and I'm going to go oops that's going to we're going to hit add down here and I'm going to say object types computers and then I'm going to say win dash and I'll check name and then we have two right here we have our uh, win Q etc and then our win R etc the win the win R is our Windows 7 machine and the win Q is the server so I'm going to select our, our Windows 7 machine and we're going to sel uh, select read only permissions for that machine and just to confirm that we're going to go right click properties give that a second to load and our computer name is WinQ so the only other option we had was our WinR which is the Windows 7 machine and our Windows 7 machine essentially is getting read permissions from this GPO so when anybody on that computer logs in they'll read from this GPO and they'll see all these settings and these settings will be applied and now the next thing I want to do is let's go to Active Directory users and computers so I just had it once again pinned to my menu there but administrative tools and coming up here always works and I'm gonna say I want to create let's go and create a new user and let's call this user uh, let's just say Tim and his user logon name is Tim at cyberdefense dot com or cyber dot defense dot com he will have our fairly generic password that we've been assigning a rather extremely generic password that we've been assigning oops I didn't match them finish okay let's come back over here to our group policy management and we're also going to create a new GPO in this domain and link it here and we'll call this one Tim GPO so let's go ahead and right click on the Tim GPO there's no settings currently defined for it we'll edit this one and let's look under preferences again and we'll look at Windows settings actually now we'll look at we'll look at control panel settings again let's look at folder options and let's just say new folder option Windows Vista and later so let's say Tim is gonna we want Tim to see hidden files and folders uh, let's just say always show menus and we'll uncheck hide extensions show him drive letters let's look under common common should be fine yeah that looks good enough you can pretty much set whatever you want here and we'll say properties on this I just want to take one more look yep we should be good and we're going to say close that and we'll add a user Tim check name Tim at cyberdefense.com and as you come back to the settings over here we see that he has all these options enabled so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come to our Windows 7 machine and I'm going to say control delete log on 
warning and authorized access is prohibited, which is the which is the warning we assigned in the previous video using our group policy management. And we're logging onto our cyber domain. So Tim enter his password. All right, so Tim is logged in now, and we'll hit start. And here we'll see some of our group policies already in effect. You remember that we said that our computer and control panel should be in the menu. So if we hover over this, then we see our menu is being applied here. And we also see our control panel has the menu. And that's taking a bit of a bit, a bit of time to load. Since we're running two VMs right now, our computer is being a little bit slow. So let's just take a look at our computer. And we'll go to the shared drive which is being applied from a previous group policy oh there you go uh, not accessible because we didn't add Tim to be able to be or pardon me we didn't add Tim and we didn't give him the permissions to be able to access that information so let's just take a look at any old one of these folders and we'll see the other group policy that we made for Tim being in effect as well we have these .dlls and .exes for every one of our files so we wanted Tim to be able to see file extensions and that's already obviously in effect and if we take a look here in our Tim and then his home drive, then we see app data, which is another one of our links in our group, or pardon me, another one of the settings in our group policy data that we link to Tim. App data. App data is always in this folder, but it's just hidden. So right there, that's another one in effect. We look inside, folder empty, but there we go. Our group policies have all been applied. So things are working perfectly. But I want to take a look at the server 2008 for one more second. And it was kind of uh, really not convenient, I guess, to keep opening different windows during this video. And uh, one thing we can do to sort of get rid of that issue is if you come here and you type in MMC. Oh, there it is. MMC, it comes up in the programs list. So that's the program name, Microsoft Management Console. That's what it stands for. Just type in MMC. And you have this window here, this console one, the console root. There's no items in this view, and it doesn't really look like you can do much with it. You have no idea what's going on. But if you come up here to File, and you say Add or Move Snap-in, let's take a look at all these different snap-ins we have. So we like to use our Active Directory users and computers, so let's hit Add on that. We have also like to use our Computer Management, and we'll say just our local Computer Management. But also if we hit Add and we say Another Computer, we can Browse, and we can say Win, Check Names, and it finds the our Windows 7 computer right there. So let's just say, okay, let's add that one too. Things are taking a little long to load here with the two virtual machines open. All right, so there we go. We added both of those computers, our Windows 7 and our server. Some other things that we've liked to take a look at so far, our group policy management, our local users and groups, just for this only, just for, okay, sorry, you can't do that. You, you can only do the uh, local users and groups for other computers, so my apologies on that one. Since we're running the domain administrator, then we have our Active Directory's users and computers. So the local users and groups doesn't exist because it's been migrated over here. Uh, we could add remote desktops, which is something we'll get into later. And let's just say our firewall, because we also talked about that in the video. and heck why not we're, we'll go ahead and just the firewall for this computer by the way and then our shared and storage management since we've set up our shares let's add that to the list so we've added all that let's hit OK and as you can see there we go we have all of our options so sort of in one convenient spot we can manage everything so here I could have just said OK new user we could have created Tim and then we could have come down to our group policy management expanded that expand our forest expanded our domains and then set new create GPO and then we can even come down to our shares make sure our shares are in effect so that we have our drive map set up and just essentially do everything that way so the MMC the Microsoft Management Console is sort of the easy way to have one central management location and you can just hit file save and you can save it under administrative tools but I'm just gonna throw on the desktop and I'm gonna say let's call this one general console and there it is, it pops up. So you can close that, open it again, 
And there it is. We have all of our options so we can sort of manage everything from one nice place. And that'll be the end of this video. Stick around for the next one.